Welcome to Around Time, featuring what's happening here in the greater Concord area. I'm your host, Dick Patton, and so welcome to the pleasure to welcome you back. And as we again continuing our marching through April, and uh, it doesn't seem possible that spring is in full bloom and uh, baseball is here, and it just I can't believe it. Where did time go? Where did winter go? And for those of us in the winter time, we actually had a very good winter for some of them because. Uh, the warm weather we had, the, the, the heating bills were down, and whether you heated with gas or with uh, oil or something, it was basically a good year in some respects. And uh, so it leads us into our topic today. We have with me as our guest, Mike Fay, who is a renewable energy provider, promoter there. And Mike's going to be here to talk to us about renewable energy. So first off the bat, Mike, welcome to Around Town. Thank you for having me. Nice segue too with the you know the winter and the yeah. you know not so not so cold. I and know it was just that's right for a veteran like me. I just couldn't believe it was winter. I felt like I was in another season somewhere. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, but, uh, yeah. We weren't hit too hard this year, um, but uh, a lot of oil was being used. A lot of coal, of mm. course, uh, generating electricity for you know uh, most homes. Um, you know, we're, I'm hoping to. to you know, I'm glad you had me on the show today because certainly uh, I'm hoping that maybe I can be a catalyst to try to help move us uh, away, along with a lot of other, of course, good people mm. who are, are passionate about uh, moving us to uh, sustainable energy as well. Sure. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to be I'm going to play the 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 dummy, I guess, because I I'm not really understanding. But sustainable energy, what is it? Well, uh, sustainable energy is anything that you can sustain, uh, you know, naturally without okay. uh, uh, ruining the environment. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. oil, you know, gas, uh, depleting resources. Uh, you know, when you're digging dinosaurs uh, up that have been buried for millions of years and releasing that carbon from the burn uh, to, you know, to, to uh, basically blanket the earth yeah. and trap the heat mm -hmm. uh, and coal, uh, which is just basically plant life that's been buried for millions of years. Yeah. Um, you know, and releasing the same thing. It's not sustainable. We're, you know, we're, we're killing our planet uh, and we need to, uh, uh, you know, use the resources that we have available to us. I mean, there's more, uh, th there's more energy one week and one week from the sun, all right, uh, capable of, of, of uh, like I said, of, of, well, more energy from the sun in one week than we use an entire year in, on the earth. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, to not harness um, you know, what we have available to us naturally mm -hmm. without ruining, uh, you know, f what we have in uh, our environment for future generations. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's downright shameful. So basically, then, you're thinking of uh, like solar energy, maybe? Is that what you, when you say the sun, mm -hmm. that sounds like maybe you're talking about solar heating, that type of thing. Absolutely. Uh, I, I really uh, enjoy the solar aspect of renewables. I mean, there's solar, of course, there's wind, there's geothermal, there's combined heat and power cogeneration scenarios. Uh, I mean, there's a lot out there that's available. Uh, but solar, to me, uh, it, I think it's the time. It's the, the time, mm. uh, that especially, you know, on a local level, when we talk about, um, you know, Concord, New Ham state of New Hampshire, uh, we have uh, a lot of incentives available to us, uh, well, even nationwide. I mean, we've got a federal 30% federal tax credit available that can knock down uh, the cost significantly. Mm. Uh, there's also the, uh, the Public Utilities Commission uh, has uh, offered a $3 per watt rebate. Just to give you an example, uh, I was calculating a system for someone um, the other day, actually for the home show. Uh, that we had here in Concord at the Everett Arena for the weekend. Mm. Uh, we did a little uh, little promo on WTPL on Jack Heath's show, yeah. uh, and uh, basically broke down a solar uh, uh, photovoltaic system generating electricity. Yeah. Uh, and the the price of the system for a 2.25 kilowatt system, which um, can generate roughly uh, 400 kilowatt hours uh, per month. The average ha and to give it put it in perspective here. Uh, 800 kilowatt hours per month is kind of the average uh, electric uh, uh, use uh, of the average home. Mm. Um, you know, obviously there are variables, kids, you know, th that sort of thing, uh, hot tubs, uh, you know, air conditioners and things like that. They could certainly raise it. Um, but uh, the system itself, $16,000 listed at, after a federal tax credit of 30%, after the $6,000 from the Public Utilities Commission, mm. we were down at about $5,000. Uh, 
really? uh, for a system that you know will pay for half your electricity yeah. uh, use. And you know, once it's paid for, it's free. Uh, it, without and the carbon footprint is is reduced, uh, you know, by half. Uh, so it's the right thing to do. Uh, on top of it, so there's plenty of reasons to promote it. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Because I know I, I know the one thing I've seen recently has been the wind with those uh, that uh, oh boy the turbines the turbines yes I right. can't think of the word mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of those and I think the what the North Country has got some of them out there right mm -hmm. well uh, yeah I mean they're all over the place uh, Lemster has a, a large commercial wind farm uh, Iberdrola out of uh, oh. Germany is the company that actually uh, yeah. uh, set it up and, 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 and uh, is maintaining it. Uh, but that's, uh, yeah, it's a large commercial wind farm. So, you know, we're on our way. There's a lot in the Midwest. Uh, you know, they're, they're working on, of course, offshore on the Atlantic seacoast. Uh, there's a tremendous potential to, uh, to harness a lot of the, the energy uh, through wind power. Hmm. Um, and they're, I mean, they're still working on the Nantucket project off the, off hmm. the Cape. Uh, on trying to get the the final approvals for that, uh, but that looks like that uh, will go forward as well. So really, yeah. Oh. Because I know I've seen even those things down in Boston. Going to Boston, I've seen the turbines there, and uh, it, and again, what I'm going to make probably laugh at me at home, but what causes them? I mean, it's obviously the wind that's going to make them turn, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, if there's no wind. Well, it's interesting. The thing about wind is that it's predictable. Yeah. Uh, believe it or not, um, you know, it's not like you're gonna you can, you know, spend uh, a certain amount of money, for example, to, to to go with a renewable wind turbine, and and you know, be in fear that potentially you won't have wind that next year yeah. just because you had it the year before. Yeah. It's actually measured within about ten percent. You can pretty much predict the wind that you're going to have from year to year. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's kind of a, an amazing thing. Yeah. So if we go through a day that there's no wind, mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't move. So you mm -hmm. can still survive without that. I mean that, that power. I mean. Well, you're not going to want to use a, a wind turbine, um, at least not without a battery storage capability, mm. and that's not uh, cost effective, at least not now. Uh, but you're not going to want to use it to supply y the entire power for your home. Okay. Uh, you know you're still going to want to be on the grid. Uh, you know if you were going to be off the grid, for example, and not tied into a utility, yeah. uh, you would want to have more than just a, a wind turbine. You know, you'd want to have a combination potentially of you know, wind, solar, uh, you know, geothermal, um, a generator, you know, mm. if you were going to be off the, mm. like I said, off the grid. Um, but on the grid, the nice thing uh, that, that's, that we're able to do today, all right, or we, that we see is that the utility companies are now net metering. Uh, they have to. Uh, so in other words, net metering, what that means is that if you're supplying energy and you're not using it instantaneously, yeah. your meter is turning backwards. Mm. So you're, you're going to get credit for the amount of energy that's being generated yeah. if you're not using it instantaneously. Really? Uh, yeah. Now, also, you mentioned geothermal. Now, what's that? What kind of energy is that source? Well, geothermal is uh, where you, what you're doing is you're you're pulling uh, your your well for your water from the ground, all okay. right, at a temperature, or you're pumping your water into the ground and you're pulling it back out, where the average temperature, uh, of course, underground is 50, you know, 50-ish degrees uh, at least here in New England. You go down a little further, well, five six feet. Uh, so what you're doing is your base temperature now is not what it would be in the middle of winter yeah. at, uh, you know, uh, at 20 degrees potentially and in mm. the middle of summer at 70 or 80 degrees to cool, to use for cooling. So you have a temperature to start off at that takes less energy to either get it up to 70 degrees, for example, to heat your home, mm. all right, or, you know, lower uh, if you wanted to use it for cooling in the, in the summer. Mm. Interesting. And is winter time any uh, different than summer? I mean, obviously, in summertime you've got, I would think, more wind. But then in the winter time you've got storms and things. But mm -hmm. well, uh, yeah, um, you know, in the winter time you'll get more wind, so the wind turbine will, you know, will create more energy then. And that's why 